Welcome to Cartography and Geography Club, Episode 4. Today we'll focus on Mexico and its surrounding areas. We'll learn how to draw volcanoes and canals, and we'll also learn about important cities and landmarks. In addition, we'll have some fun with the dune buggy race game in Baja, California, and finish our episode with our fourth iteration of our time travel geography game. Today you will need your starter pack, so let's jump in! Welcome to Cartography, I'm your host, Mark. I'd like to start by letting you know one of my favorite places I have visited is Adelaide, Australia. My favorite part was the petting zoo where I was able to pet and feed koalas and wallabies. Make sure to let me know what your favorite place you have visited is and why below so I can get to know you better. Now let's get into cartography and geography. Do you know how the areas of modern day Mexico and surrounding areas were first discovered by Europeans? Although the Spanish Empire had established colonies in the Caribbean starting in 1493, only in the second decade of the second 16th century did they begin exploring the east coast of Mexico. The Spanish first learned of Mexico during, during the Juan de Griva expedition of 1518. Due to the expedition's findings of extreme amounts of wealth in the area, the Spanish began their campaign to subdue the local nations. The Spanish conquest of the Aztec Empire began in February 1519 when Hernan Cortes landed on the Gulf Coast and founded the Spanish city of Veracruz. Around 500 conquistadors, along with horses, cannons, swords, and long guns, gave the Spanish some technological advances over indigenous warriors. But key to the Spanish victory was making strategic alliances with the disgruntled indigenous city-states who fought with them against the Aztec. This ultimately drove a Spanish victory over the Aztec people. Prior to Europeans arriving in, the, in Mexico and surrounding areas, the Aztecs ruled over the local pe people through alliances with the local city-states. It was never a true territorial empire controlling a territory by large military garrisons in conquered provinces, but rather dominated its client city-state primarily by installing Aztec-friendly rulers and by extending an imperial ideology to its client city-states. The Aztec sphere of influence gave the central city-state Tenochtitlan great wealth as the center of trade for the empire. In today's first exercise, you are the leader of the Tenochtitlan city-state and have a hundred stone units, a hundred wood units, and a hundred years to gain as much favor with your people as possible. Here are the structures you can build and how much time and resources they will cost you. On a piece of paper, Draw a map of your city-state with the amount of favor totaled up. Here's how I would do it. Once you are complete, take a picture of your map with your total favor and send it to me so I can feature it on our notifications page. Now let's cover some of Mexico and its surrounding area's notable features. The Rio Grande de Santiago, or Santiago River, is 433 kilometers, or 269 miles long. It is the largest river in Mexico and its surrounding areas, and flows west into the Pacific Ocean. Its origin is Lake Chapala, and descends over 1,700 meters, Sadly, this river used to be able to be fished and sw swam in only 50 years ago, 
but now it is extremely polluted, making these activities advised against. The largest mountain in Mexico and its surrounding areas is the Pico de Orziba. This mountain is 5,636 meters or 18,491 feet above sea level. It is part of the Trans-Mexican Volcanic Belt between Veracruz and Puebla. This volcano last erupted in the 19th century and is currently dormant, but not extinct. It is the second largest volcanic peak after Mount Kilimanjaro. The volcano is so massive it blocks moisture from the Gulf of Mexico from saturating central Mexico and influences the climates of both areas. In order to draw a volcano on a map, it is important to understand how mountains are made and how they affect the local area. Volcanoes are openings in the earth, usually on a mountain, where tectonic plates meet. Typically, after a volcano erupts, fertile soil is deposited around the volcano site, making it very good for farming. This leads to rivers near volcanoes to be areas where humans gravitate to, and currently over 350 million people live within areas close to volcanoes. Geographic representations of volcanoes can vary from black and red to just mountain drawings with volcano indicators. On a separate piece of paper, draw a volcano. Here is how I would do it. The largest desert in Mexico and its surrounding areas is the Chihuahua Desert. This desert is approximately 500,000 square kilometers or 200,000 square miles and is the largest desert in North America. The World Wildlife Fund believes this to be the most biologically diverse desert in the world. The longest road in Mexico is Federal Highway 15. It extends over 2,300 kilometers or 1,400 miles. It starts in the north at the U.S.-Mexico border and extends south to Mexico City. It runs through seven different states and notably connects the cities of Guadalajara, Toluca, Malatzlan, and Hermosillo. Additionally, Federal Highway 15 corridor has historically been one of the most significant migration corridors for Mexican migrants headed towards the western and southwestern United States. Long before modern day migration patterns, the Mexican Federal Highway 15 corridor was also the corridor many Spanish expeditions followed in their colonization and founding of settlements that would later become communities in the modern day Mexican Northwest. The largest forest in Mexico and surrounding areas is the Maya forest. After the Amazon, the Maya forest is the largest remaining tropical forest in the Americas. At a size of 13.3 million acres, it stretches across Belize, Guatemala, and the Yucatan Peninsula. This forest is home to countless species that are rare and endangered. One of these you're probably aware of is the ocelot, which is a large cat species. In the winter months, this area is a bird migration location for up to several million birds. In addition, it preserves the archeological site of the Maya civilization where it gets its name from. The North and South American continents are divided by the Panama Canal. This canal is 82 kilometers or 51 miles long and connects the Atlantic and Pacific Oceans. The canal cuts across the Isthmus of Panama and is a conduit for maritime trade. One of the largest and most difficult engineering projects ever undertaken, the Panama Canal shortcut greatly reduces the time for ships to travel between the Atlantic and Pacific Oceans, enabling them to avoid the lengthy and hazardous Cape Horn route around the southernmost tip of South America via the Drake Passage or Strait of Magellan, and the even less popular route 
through the Arctic Archipelago in the Bering Strait. It is comprised of three uplocks and three downlocks, which were completed in 1914. A geographic representation of a canal is usually done with the color orange and follows the outline of how the canal navigates. Canals are always connecting the waterways that are typically blue in color. On a separate piece of paper, draw a river and canal system. This is how I would do it. Now that you have the volcano and the canal sheet, put the volcano on top of the canal sheet and place on your light up board in order to transfer the canal onto volcano however you choose. This is how I would do it. Once you are finished, please take a picture and send it to me so I can post it to our announcements page. Now let's look at some landmarks in Mexico and the surrounding areas. Chichen Itza, La Paz Waterfall, Gardens, and El Coltoyopet Fortress are some great ones. Here is a picture of Chichen Itza. Chichen Itza is a large Mayan structure built prior to Europeans arriving to the continent, thought to be constructed around 600 AD on the Yucatan Peninsula in Mexico. Chichen Itza is about 30 meters or 98 feet tall. It consists of a series of nine square terraces, each is approximately 2.57 meters or 8.4 feet high, with a, a 6 meter or 20 foot high temple upon the summit. Chichen Itza is one of the most visited archaeological sites in Mexico, and in 2017 it was estimated to have received 2.1 million visitors. La Paz Waterfall Gardens in Costa Rica is the largest wildlife sanctuary in the country. Consisting of five waterfalls that range in height from 5 meters or 15 feet to 37 meters or 120 feet, the sanctuary has over 100 species of animals including hummingbirds, jaguars, and frogs. It's located on the northeastern slope of the Poaz Volcano and encompasses a 40-acre wildlife refuge and 30-acre pasture, which includes cloud forest and rainforest, as well as an orchid garden. El Coyotep Fortress is located in Happy, Nicaragua. This military structure is strategically positioned at a height of 360 meters above sea level on top of the Coyotep Hill near the city of Masaya, whose construction resembles that of a fortress of the Spanish crown. It was built in the 20th century by Nicaraguan engineers in the period between World War I and World War II to serve as a lookout post on the Nicaraguan Pacific Railroad that linked Man Managua, which is the capital of Nicaragua, with the cities of Masaya and Granada. Through history, this structure served mainly as a prison with limited military conflict usage, but today it has become a tourist attraction. On a separate piece of paper, draw a representation of each of these landmarks. After you draw these landmarks, use the light-up board to transfer them onto your volcano and canal map. Here's how I would do it. Once you are happy with your map, make sure to take a picture and send it to me to be placed on our website in our announcements page. Let's look at some smaller scale maps now. Mexico and its surrounding areas have a multitude of different architecture styles. Two of the best known are late Baroque style and Spanish vias. The Baroque architecture style is a highly decorative and theatrical style which appeared in Italy in the early 17th century and gradually spread across Europe in areas with large Catholic populations. Baroque architects 
took the basic elements of Renaissance architecture, including domes, colonnades, and made them higher, grander, more decorated, and more dramatic. Spanish villas date back to the 17th and 18th century. Their distinctive features include red roofs, colorful tiling, stucco walls, and wrought iron detailing. The windows, doors, and porches are uniquely designed with arches and curves. There is also a connection between the curved pathways that often lead into these arches. As for our next activity, on a separate piece of paper, draw a building using elements of both the Baroque and Spanish Villa style. Here is how I would do it. Once you are complete, please take a picture of your house and send it to me so we can feature it in our announcement section. Two of the most interesting cities in Mexico and the surrounding areas are Mexico City and Guatemala City. Mexico City is the largest city in North America and is one of the most important cultural and financial centers in the world. The 2020 population for the city proper was 9,200,009,944 with a land area of 1,495 square kilometers. According to the most recent definition agreed upon by the federal and state governments, the population of Greater Mexico City is 21,800,000. Mexico City is located in the Valley of Mexico, sometimes called the Basin of Mexico. It has a minimum altitude of 2,200 meters or 7,200 feet above sea level and is surrounded by mountains and volcanoes that reach elevations of over 5,000 meters or 16,000 feet. Guatemala City is the capital and largest city of Guatemala and the most populous urban area in Central America. The city is located in the south central part of the country, nestled in a mountain valley called Valle de la Ermita. The city with its robust economy, attracts hundreds of thousands of rural migrants from Guatemala's interior hinterlands and serves as the main entry point for most foreign immigrants seeking to settle in Guatemala. Guatemala City is located in the mountainous regions of the country between the Pacific Coastal Plain to the south and the northern lowlands of the Petén region. Okay, let's have some fun. Baja California is known for its dune buggy courses. Today's game will be to make a five mile dune buggy course with as many turns as possible. Make sure to add a scale to the map and terrain features to make the course interesting. Here is how I would do it. Make sure to take a picture of your map and send it to me so that it can be featured in our announcement section. The final thing we'll be doing today is the fourth installment of a game we'll be completing through the year. It is the near future and you are a detective for the time travel company. A group of criminals called the agent are going back in time and changing the past. It is your responsibility to determine when, where, and what they are going to do based on clues sent to us. Today's clues are found in the city formerly called Tenochtitlan, made of balsa and is 25 tons. And the date is when it was discovered. Send your answer in with your name for season one points to be posted in our notification section. That's all for episode four of Cartography and Geography Club. I hope you had fun. I look forward to next week's episode on North America Island Nations. Have a great week!